Well, folks, I went to the grocery store this morning and I picked up four things. Four things. And it got to be over $30. That is absolutely ridiculous. Four grocery items over $30. The cost of living is getting to the point that most people are having trouble making it. The people that look like they're having a great time and not having any issues at all making it in this new economy with all this inflation, usually they're living on debt. They're maxing their credit cards out and they're just living simply on debt. They may be going and then taking a mortgage out on their property, doing without other things because people want to play a part. They want to look like they're doing better than what they actually are. But unless you are super wealthy and you're definitely having trouble making ends meet i know i am everything has went up and according to official numbers that i've looked at inflation on food and a lot of necessities like energy has went up by 20 percent they will tell you inflation is this little amount but they're basing that on a short amount of time not over the last few years that's like they told us that close to a million jobs had been created that weren't. The numbers are being faked. The numbers are being fudged on purpose to convince the American people that things are better than what they actually are. You're suffering. You're living. You're having trouble making ends meet, having trouble paying the bills. But you have the politicians. You have the media telling you that everything is okay. Everything is just Humpty Dory. And you're saying, I'm having a hard time, but maybe it's just me. Maybe if I can take this mortgage out on my house, maybe if I can sell this, maybe if I can max my credit card so I can make it a little bit longer, and then maybe things will straighten out because apparently it's just me because the economy is great because the media says so, the politicians say so. However, when you're actually there and you're actually trying to live and make ends meet, then you realize what they're saying can't be fact. The economy can't be strong. They'll tell us the economy is the strongest economy we've had in decades. Everything is just great. And we know that it's not. And in fact, most people watching this video, and most people out there in general, your neighbors, your family, your friends, your cousins, your aunts, your uncles, your brothers, your sisters, are no doubt having trouble making ends meet, unless, like I said, they're really, really wealthy. And we're at the point now that if anything else increases, anything happens, you know, like an emergency happens, you have to spend a few extra dollars to fix your vehicle or something like that. You're going to be, you could be homeless. You could have to do without food. And a lot of people are in that situation right now. It keeps getting worse and worse and worse because the cost of living keeps going up and up and up. And it's because they keep printing more money. So how long, how much could you endure if say you had to pay what you're, you're paying what you're paying now for your food for your fuel for your vehicle for your rent for your utilities and you're probably maxed out and if you're not maxed out how much more could you take before you were maxed out if your bills increased by a hundred dollars a month could you pay that would you would, would you had trouble paying that would you feel that or could you pay that without even noticing it? What about if it was $200 a month extra? $500 a month extra? More than what you're paying now. $1,000 more a month with inflation. And that's definitely a possibility, unfortunately. As for $1,000 a month to buy what you have right now, the food you're buying right now, the fuel for your vehicle you're buying right now, your rent and your utilities, Everything could definitely go up to equal $1,000 or more extra than what you're paying now every month. Would you be okay with that? Could you make it? Could you keep maxing your credit cards out? Could you take another loan out on your home? Would you be homeless? Would you have to do without food? Would you have to watch your children go hungry? Unfortunately, that is where it's heading in my opinion. Inflation is going to keep rising because they keep spending spending and spending and the more currency that goes into circulation the more inflation goes up you have more dollars in circulation chasing fewer 
goods. But we also have more people. We have people coming by the millions every year across our southern border. Northern border is open. These people also need food. These people need housing. These people need clothing. So you have more people with more dollars chasing fewer and fewer goods. So that's a perfect recipe for more inflation. And right now, I talked about this the other day. This can definitely put us over the edge when it comes to inflation. This is from The Hill. More inflation, a looming strike, threatens to drive supply down and prices up. So like I said, you have more dollars, more people in need of supplies, and the supplies are going to go down and prices will go up. If you have less stuff, more people, more dollars, then your prices on everything are going to go up. Surveys show inflation remains a top concern for most Americans, and no wonder with groceries and rent up by more than 20% since January 2021, and this is from The Hill. It's not some fringe publication, this is from The Hill, and they say inflation is up more than 20% since 2021. That is a lot. Now it appears more price hikes and supply chain problems are coming. Union contracts between East Coast port workers and management expire on September the 30th, and the International Longshoremen's Association is threatening to strike. The 85,000 member ILA is aiming for the West Coast Port Workers 2022 pay increase of 32%. So they want a pay increase of 32% or they're going to go on strike. And all of those containers coming from China or where else in the United States because we import everything won't be unloaded. They'll be waiting out in the ocean. So your prices will go up because you have fewer goods, more people chasing fewer goods with more and more dollars. And on down here in this article, it says strikes cause tremendous economic damage and some shippers and suppliers might permanently reorient their supply chains outside of the U.S. Railroad and airline crews cannot simply decide to stop working, but after East Coast port contracts expire on September 30, 2024, port workers will then be able to strike for higher wages driving up inflation and shutting down the nation's economy. Congress should take a, take another look at this, the article says. So that is definitely a big deal, and that could definitely cause price increases, more inflation, more hardship. And like I said, how much more can we take? And to make matters worse, they've even raised property taxes on most people's homes, on most people's business. I know here at my house, this property, when I bought this place, was valued at $133,000. And it was that way for several years after I bought the property. But two years ago, I got a letter in the mail that said they had reassessed the property. And it wasn't just mine, it was just about everybody's property in the county. They had reassessed the property values, and now my property, they say, is worth $256,000. So they raised my property value, supposedly, but it's still the same house, still the same location, still the same amount of land, but they raised it up over $100,000 in value because they wanted to tax me more. And it wasn't just me, it was everybody in the county that owns property. They raised everyone's property, as far as I know, values up. They said, this is worth so much more. Here's your new property values. So... And a few months later, I got the new tax bill. And sure enough, my taxes had went up. So when your property taxes go up, so does your insurance. When your property values, I mean, go up, so does your homeowner's insurance and things. Your vehicle's insurance goes up because vehicles are costing more now. So the price keeps going up, more and more inflation. And it just makes things worse. It's like a domino effect with the economy and with being able to live, you know, comfortably. Most people are suffering. You take, before all this inflation, massive inflation, we've always had inflation, but it's been up and down, up and down, it's been small, usually. But this last uptick in inflation over the last few years, since 2000, 2000 2021, uh, 2020, 2021, I mean, it's went up very quickly. And you take people who were poor, to start out with, 
they've gotten even more poor. People who are middle class are now poor. The only people who are making it are people who are already wealthy to start out with. And even they eventually will come down with their standard of living because of inflation. Because you have more money printing, you have things like the local governments raising the property values up to raise their taxes up, which has a domino effect to cause more price increases for things like your homeowner's insurance, your vehicle prices go up, so you have to pay more vehicle insurance, more to grocery store. I mean, you can go in now, like me this morning, and get four things. Come out 30 something dollars for just four things. Carried it out in uh, two little plastic bags. And it wasn't anything. I mean, it was ridiculous. But every time you go, every time I go anyway, and get and check out, and I get that total price, it's still yet kind of shocking. But you're looking at this and you're thinking, I could have bought this three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, a whole lot cheaper. My mom went to the store to here, I think it was yesterday actually, and got just a few things, spent over $100. And she's on a fixed income. Fixed income, she worked all of her life, and now she's on a fixed income, having to make ends meet. It's pathetic what it is, it really is. It is absolutely pathetic. The way things are going with the economy, the way they keep spending and spending, and it's not that they are spending in the United States. They're spending outside the United States. They're putting on more debt, putting more currency into existence to supply Israel, to supply Ukraine, to give money to everyone else, to have more people come across the border who never paid any taxes in at all, who never contributed to society at all, and they're giving them prepaid debit cards and medical and housing and shipping those people everywhere around the country. Military-aged fighting men. And that's where our money's going. It's not that they are spending all this money for infrastructure improvements, for improving the country, for building a border wall, for doing anything constructive for the United States. It's all for somebody else, somewhere else. And a lot of the uh, military money from the military budget for Israel and Ukraine, it comes, it stays in the United States because they pay the military contractors to build these weapons and to ship those weapons somewhere else. So that money actually stays here in the United States. A lot of it does. And doesn't actually go. I mean, there's some that goes like to Ukraine and Israel, actually cash amounts. But a lot of that is fed back to the military contractors for weapons that go somewhere else. But the currency stays here, which makes more inflation. How much more can you stand? How much more inflation can the American people stand? How much can you stand? Could you stand without going completely broke, without being homeless and having to do without food, another hundred dollars a month, and it's what you're paying now, just to stay at the level you're at, 200, 300, 500, 1,000. What if your cost of living because of inflation, because of supply chain issues, because of so many people being here wanting these goods, wanting these homes, wanting what you need to live? What if your inflation went up another, another thousand dollars where you could buy and keep what you have and the standard of living you have right now where would you be at could you afford another hundred dollars five hundred dollars a month a thousand dollars a month could you afford it or would you be starving and homeless a lot of people will be starving and homeless unfortunately what you think in the comments below if you liked the video have any thoughts comments i really appreciate it thanks for watching i'll see you on the next video hopefully